Welcome back everybody to another episode where I have a look at fancy films from my collection. Um, these are ticking along nicely, there's some nice titles popped up in the last few videos. There's tons more to go through yet. Uh, so in this episode we're going to have a look at another five. Uh, one absolute big hitter. One um, that is a huge sort of like child film of mine that, that I absolutely adore. And a couple of pieces of, of, of sort of like seminal shit. Uh, in with this one. Um, so the first one we're going to look at is a uh, Lou Ferrigno film which is Sinbad of the Seven Seas. Um, quite an odd film this one. This is a canon film uh, from 89. Um, the the guy that directed these um, Ian, uh, Enzo Castorelli um, you may know him from some other films. He did the original Inglorious Bastards film. Um, he was. He also did the original uh, Bronx Warriors film and uh, the New Barbarians. They're, they're the ones I particularly know of his. And if you know his, it's just typical Italian exploitation kind of stuff. Some of his, some of his stuff was okay. The rest of it was just trash, really. And this is all right. You know what I mean? Obviously, this is a canon film, so you know what you're getting into. There's no real big budget. Uh, Lou Fregno, I, I think, was signed on for a, a, a deal with Canon Films. Um, we'll have a look at some of the other ones he did in a bit. Um, but this one, I think they just got probably got the rights to the Sinbad name and just thought, fuck it, we'll do a Sinbad film. It's okay. It isn't brilliant. Sinbad has to go and find five gems from across five evil zones, basically, to uh, turn the people of the realm back into humans because everyone's been turned into animals by, by an evil sorcerer. Um, yeah, it, it's it's okay. It doesn't feel like a Sinbad film. And if, if you look at some of the original Sinbad films, um, which we will do in, in, a later, in some later videos, um, it doesn't feel like those at all, you know what I mean? It just feels like Lou Ferrigno with his top off. Um, and, and for some stuff it works, for some of his films it worked, for this it didn't quite work. Um, but it's, it's okay nevertheless, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's a fun little watch, but it's not one you'll go back to on a, on a regular basis. Uh, next up, um, a, a, a true favourite of mine, I've always liked this film, uh, 1982 Jim Henson's uh, The Dark Crystal. Um, this just oozes class. Um, fantastic visuals, uh, the way it's filmed, the way it's shot, everything about it um, is just beautiful. Um, Storyline's great. If you've ever seen the TV show that popped up on Netflix uh, a few years back, um, I'd suggest watching that first, then get into the film because the film's set after the TV show uh, and it rounds everything off sort of nicely. Um, basic principle of the film um, the Gell are, are, are the last of a species um, the, the, the one particular Gell that the film's about he, he thinks he's the, the, the last that, that, that there's been um, the, the Skeksis the, the character at the top there has, has, has killed them all off sucking their essence out to, to prolong their lives uh, it's, it's dark as a kid it's scurry um, it's everything you would expect from the Henson Workshop Company um, and more. It's a true gem, it's brilliant. There is a 4K of this now, and I haven't seen it on 4K, but I would imagine it looks beautiful. Um, I would imagine majority of people have seen The Dark Crystal now, but one of the best things that the Henson Company ever did, it still stands out head and shoulders above a lot of the stuff that was out at this particular time. Uh, it's 1982, just how good it actually is. Um, Next one, I can take or leave Vin Diesel. There's certain films that I really like him in. Um, I love the Riddick films, I, I, I think they're great. Uh, the Triple X films are good tongue in cheek action movies. The rest of his stuff, I don't really care for. Um, there's been the odd odd film, Bloodshot was okay. Um, what was the other one that it was in? I can't, can't remember that one. Um, the like a post apocalyptic kind of film. It was okay, and then this one came out, and it didn't have much sort of high hopes for it, but it turns out it's actually really good. It's The Last Witch Hunter. The film starts off very much like 13th Warrior uh, with Antonio Banderas. It basically, it feels like a rip-off altogether of, of, of that. 
Uh, and after about the first 20 minutes, he irks away from it, the story goes away from it, uh, and it turns out that Vin Diesel is the last of the line of the um, Catholic um, witch hunters um, that have been around since medieval times, um, trying to sort of put pay to witches as, as, they, as they crop up throughout the realm. Uh, and it starts off in, in, in sort of those those dark age kind of times, and then it spins itself in, into a modern day time in New York, uh, and there are still witches, and, and Vin Diesel's trying to still sort them out. Uh, actually, really good film, you know what I mean? If you don't mind a bit of Vin Diesel, uh, I would say check this one out. It's, it's better than what you think it would be. Um, now we get to the biggest hitter of all time, uh, and I can't wait to get my hands uh, on the Chronicles that the, the Arrow video put out. Um, I would imagine that that set is going to be phenomenal. But this one's done me for, for a, a, a good number of years. Uh, and it's Conan the Barbarian. Um, one of Schwarzenegger's better films. Um, probably the best film within the Sword and Sorcery universe. Uh, and franchise of films um, it, it it's just phenomenal the way it looks uh, how barbaric how bloodthirsty it is how brutal it is um, the, the, the quality of the effects in it are really good as well as um, the score is fantastic um, this is, is the benchmark of where all sword and sorcery films should be should have been and have to be uh, it is phenomenally good. Um, it feels epic on every level. Um, the the way it's shot in sort of wide angle um, shows you how many extras were in this at one particular time. It's just filled with people. Um, it does feel like a living, breathing place, um, a, a, a living, breathing environment. Um, it doesn't feel like it's on a stage or a closed set at any time. Um, it, it, it feels like this, this could have been real and it's not, it's all nonsense um, but it is really really good um, James, James Earl Jones is also brilliant in this um, if you've never seen Conan, which I, I, I very much doubt there's, there's people watching this that haven't seen Conan the Barbarian now um, this is a must, a must of Sword and Sorcery films uh, and the last one to round this off, a nice little Disney classic. Um, one of my daughter, one of mine and my daughter's favourites. Um, the, she used to watch this on a regular basis. I, I used to like sitting and watching with her as well. It was one of my favourites as a kid as well as. And it is Disney's The Sword and the Stone. Um, this depicts Disney's adaptation uh, of the Arthurian legend. Um, it's it's really good. Um, it... it, it, it plays it that, that right at the beginning he, he, he's basically a child when he when he pulls the sword um, Merlin's quite a bumbling character in this, he, he's a really really good character, the story's really really good in it um, it's one that we've always gone back to in this household um, and it, it is a true Disney classic um, it is quite short this one though I think it's 70 minutes long um, but again, I only own the DVD of it. There's definitely a Blu-ray of it in the UK, and I, I do need to upgrade it at some point. Uh, but it is a great, great Disney film. Disney should do more more stuff like this. They just seem to shy away from it now, and, and it's, it's a shame, really. Um, yeah, so that was that was the five for this episode. So it was Sinbad of the Seven Seas. The Dark Crystal. The Last Witch Hunter, The Magnificent Corner of the Barbarian, and Disney's Sword in the Storm. So thank you very much everybody for tuning in. Take care, I'll see you all again on the next one. Bye bye!